Galway, on the west coast of Ireland, is a place renowned for music and dance. It's appropriate then that it should be the venue for the 20th World Irish Dancing Championships. Now the dancers have come from New Zealand, Canada, England, America, Scotland, Australia and of course Ireland. Only the best compete here and for that they've had to qualify at a heat in their own area. One heat took place 200 miles to the north in Newcastle, County Down. And it's here below the mountains of Morne that our story begins. A quiet Sunday morning on Newcastle Strand. While some take in the fresh air with a stroll or on horseback, elsewhere there's more serious work afoot. St Mary's Hall, in the heart of Newcastle, is the venue for the Ulster Heats of the World Championships. Competitors have travelled from far and wide to compete, and some are polishing their steps outside amidst the dust and debris of the previous night. The Ulster Heaps are the only chance that these competitors will get to book their tickets to the finals in Galway. And hundreds of dancers compete for the opportunity. Inside the hall, the audience focus on one of the favourites. 24-year-old Paula McCullough from West Belfast. Unlike Scottish dancing, where the hands are often held in an arc over the head of the dancer, Irish dancers must keep their arms by their sides. The art is to keep the arms straight, but not rigid, to keep it natural. There are two sections in the senior competition, named after the type of shoes that the dancer wears, soft shoe dancing and hard shoe dancing. In the soft section, competitors dance to a fast-paced reel. The adjudicators are also part of this world of Irish dancing. Most of them are ex-dancers and teachers. Petite Carol Levy dances the reel. She's 21 years old and is regarded as another favourite to qualify for the World Championship. Many of the audience know all about the tension of waiting to perform. Paula McCullough seems to have left her nerves at home. She is one of the most assured competitors and her fluid movements are balletic and stylish. Hard shoe dancing is more rhythmic than soft shoe. Dancers must offer an interpretation which reflects the intricacies of the music. reckoned to be one of the best hard shoe dancers in the country. Her style is lively and energetic.
Dancing of this caliber is the result of endless hours of practice. To the delight of their supporters, both girls qualify for the World Championships. This is Twinbrook, a housing estate in West Belfast. Paula McCullough lives and works here. Work for her is a small porter cabin set in some open ground. It was meant to be a temporary nursery, but it's become a little more permanent. Paula is lucky to have a job in an area with some of the highest unemployment in Western Europe. She likes working with the children, but her contract is short term only. The nursery is a welcome change from her real passion in life, dancing. I started dancing when I was about nine and probably did it because it was the thing to do then. I wasn't forced to go or anything. It was something that I'd heard that I wanted to go. Right now, everybody can make whatever they want. You have to be prepared to be serious about it. I go to two classes a week. Classes would last maybe two to three hours and just whenever I can really fit it in. But the only hobby I have is dancing. I wouldn't, I'm not interested in anything else. This is, this is my life, this is what I do, and I just stick at one thing and hopefully I get better at it. <laughs> Paula is one of the best dancers of her age group. The cups and medals that decorate her home reflect her success. You have to look good from the minute you walk on the stage. If you have a nice dress or a tidy appearance, you know, you're, the adjudicator's attention's caught right from the from the beginning. I'm not saying they award more marks because you look better, but it certainly helps, you know. The patterns and symbols on Paula's dress can be found elsewhere in Celtic art, illustrating books like the Book of Kells and the Book of Duro, the art of the open curve. I've qualified for the world 14 times now, and every, every year, you know, it's still as exciting as the first time. I think it is anyway, you know. Maybe for some people the edge would go off it. But every year, you know, as you get older, it becomes more enjoyable because you meet different people from one year to the next. You know, different competitors who maybe live um, in Australia or Canada or something like that. And you meet them every year, you know, and it's a social kind of thing too. So it's not all dancing. Some 60 miles to the south, across the border, the fields of County Louth. It's good farming land and the setting is far removed from the troubled world of West Belfast. RD is one of its main market towns. Carol Levy works here in marketing. We've come up with two baskets, a first prize and a second prize and a raffle that, you know, Matthew's chemist will do themselves. So what we'll do is we'll give these to the people going in the door. We'll ask them to fill in their name and their address and to drop it into the shop tomorrow for the raffle for the free gift. We'll have the two gifts sitting. We'll do a kind of a presentation tonight, the first prize and the second prize. And we have this done, you know, just to draw attention to it tonight with the T.A. Matthews, the free draw. A car is essential to Carol's work. She spends a lot of time negotiating the narrow roads around RD. Strangely enough, County Louth comes under the umbrella of the Ulster branch of Irish dancing. That's why Carol qualified for the World Championship in Newcastle. I started dancing when I was about four years old. Uh, my two older sisters danced and Mammy danced as well. So it was just sort of part of the family tradition that we would all go to dancing. So um, I started then and uh, Paul and Margaret gave up then in a few years time, but I kept going from that. When I started off dancing, um, I went to school and I came home and did my homework and danced. So it just got into that routine that I was 50-50, you know, go to school and then uh, come home and practice. And then 
even after my exams and I went to college we did the same thing just studied in the library and came home and trained and that so uh, that's the way it has been now I'm working so it's work and dance. Well, Carol. Carol is well known in this small community through her job and her dancing. Hi, Carl. I just talked to him for there anyway. Okay. Now, firstly, what I want to talk to you about is uh, Drogheda. Right. I was down with Jean yesterday and we've done a stock and order. Um, you've done all our stocks, have you? Yeah. Oh, it's okay. Now, for Drogheda in Love and Care, I've stocked back up in your more popular shades, the likes of 73, 75, 77, and 79. Work provides a vital income to support her hobby. Irish dancing as a, a hobby is very expensive. Your costume can cost maybe £300 and then your dancing shoes, all the accessories and then even for example to go to the, we the world and spend a weekend in Galway, it's all very expensive. For Well from the family point of view I feel it has been an expensive hobby for me down through the years. Even the travelling we did every weekend, you know, it was all expense. Carol's home is chock-a-block with medals, trophies and cups. The result of hours and hours of practice and much personal sacrifice. Carol understands the necessity of discipline. There's little time in her life for anything but dancing. When I practice Irish dancing, I practice every day. You know, I would practice maybe two, t two hours. Uh, every day and then all day Saturday and Sunday. Winning in Irish dancing is uh, important. It, it helps you, it motivates you. But um, I think at this stage, uh, dancing is such a, maybe an obsession with me now that it's just, it's just part of life, you know, and it's not really the winning as such as merely the desire to get up and dance and to be part of the whole um, situation, I suppose. Definitely you can be disappointed, but um, I think I have been sort of happy more times than disappointed. I can't complain. Back in West Belfast, Paula McCullough is nervous. She has an appointment with a man she hoped she wouldn't have to see before the World Championships, the physiotherapist. Come on, love. How are you? All right. Thanks. Okay, darling. Not okay. too bad. Right. Just go right through. Paula has twisted her ankle and torn some ligaments. It's one of the most common injuries suffered by dancers and needs careful treatment. Take your shoe off there, love, and let me see your ankle. See how like it is. It's maybe better. It's not great. It's not great? No. Well, it's a lot better because of the fluid's away. Now, yeah, it's draining. Have you done anything on it? I've tried a couple of things on it. Have you, love? Mm-hmm. And how'd some, it go? Some it hurts and some it doesn't, you know. Mm-hmm. It, it all depends the way you turn it in. Yeah. Is it? Uh -huh. I want you to try five minutes each day to see how, how like it goes. And if you feel any pain, you stop. You don't carry on. You, you stop and right. come back and we'll get it treated properly. We want this band to be strengthened up before you start anything. Mm -hmm. But it's a wee bit there and yeah. there. Yeah. Just all across that. All across the band. Mm -hmm. It must be a hundred percent before you do anything on it. I know. Because if you don't, you only break down and that's it, finished. Or your treatment's gone to the wall. In the kitchen of her home in RD, Carol Levy practices. It's part of her daily routine. rehearsing a pattern of intricate steps, repeating them over and over again, building up her stamina, combining the artistic and the athletic.
cup of tea? I'd love a cup of tea. Right. I was down to your granny's today. Yeah, hi, Alicia. We're all asking about you. Despite her injury, Paula is optimistic about mm -hmm. making the finals. What She's booked her trip to Galway. Yeah. Listen, listen, I'm going to go down to the class today. Are you going down? Yeah, I thought I'd better, just because it's getting, it's not too long to the world now, so I'd better go and see anyway. No, I'll only do a wee bit. Maybe see how far I get. What did the physiotherapist say? He said to try a bit, but not do over tax it, so that's what I'll do. Yeah. Thanks. Just set it there. I mean, that costume, for God's sake. I'm right, I will. Will you not be going to any world? If anything happens, that you'll definitely not be going. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Listen, you have to look on the bright side of things. I'm sure everything will be all right. Paula's dancing class is held in a local community hall in Lower Anderson's town. She's been resting for several days. This, however, is a special training session with her teacher and other classmates who have qualified for Galway. Now is the time to find out if her ankle can hold up to the strain of prolonged dancing. Will she be a participant in Galway or a non-looker? Try this out now. Okay. Alright, I'll have to take things very easy. Try uh, a twist movement across. That'll get the whole angle working. See if there's any stuffiness. Yes. That's try it again. Okay. Yeah. Try it again. Um, try your sweet movement. Any reaction so far? Yeah, it is. It's sore. In the back? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Try your uh, twizz. Let's see how we go. I don't know what I'll be Right, just try it on a bit. And then if it gets sore, stop it, you know? A bit sore? Yeah, sore. Mm -hmm. Any reaction? Not really. My feet are stiff because I'm, mm -hmm. I'm used to it. Well, that's a great improvement, Paula, but I'm afraid we'll just have to wait and see. In RD, Carol Levy's dancing class is held on the stage of a church hall under the watchful eye of her teacher. Like most dancers and teachers, they have a close relationship. I think every teacher should form a special relationship with their pupils because apart from teaching them the dancing, you've got to know the child, know what they're capable of, know what their attitude is to dancing and to competition. So you have to be more than just a teacher to the children. Natural ability would be very, very important, but dedication would be equally as important. Parents can be over ambitious for their children and perhaps they do expect too much from teachers. Uh, some of them, not all of them. And it's very hard to explain to them that their child won't be a champion dancer. Some of them can be very disappointed about this and withdraw the child from the class. Or others are quite happy to have them learn Irish dancing for the sake of learning part of their culture. But some of them can be very overambitious. In fact, there is one very well-known adjudicator in the Limerick area who told me a very interesting story at one stage that um, her ambition was to teach orphans and uh, people thought that was very noble but she corrected them in that she would just like to teach children with no mothers. Good, Mary, make sure you do a good finish there, right? On the end of it. Irish dancing is a very beautiful art form. There's no doubt in my mind at all about that. It's one of the most beautiful art forms there is. And I find it a great pity that it doesn't get the same publicity, 
perhaps that um, the athletics, the Gaelic football, soccer, all these different um, sporting events get. It's a great pity that the dancing doesn't get the same publicity because when a child is training for a world championship, they would spend hours upon hours, day in, day out, seven days a week, practicing for the event. Arch the feet now. Point them down, down. They would train as hard as any national or international athlete or footballer. And yet, at the end of the day, they may or may not win the world. That's beside the point. But whether they do or not, they won't be heard tell of after it, outside of the world of Irish dancing. Sharp. Up right up on the toe. Easter, the west coast of Ireland and the windswept city of Galway. The Leisureland complex is the venue for the 20th World Irish Dancing Championships. <laughs> Spectators and competitors have come from all over the world and some of the male dancers limber up before their competition. The opening soft shoe round. Some of the best dancers in the world are now in competition. Strongly fancied is Colin Dunn, number 12, and he's from Birmingham. The numbers of male dancers have been in decline over the past few years. In the 60s and early 70s, the men's competitions were the highlights of the championships. After the soft shoe round, the more robust rhythmic hard shoe routine. Each of the four rounds is judged by a different panel of three adjudicators. Armstrong, twice world champion, knows about the pressures of competition. It's a very tough business. It's a business where people do sustain injury and dance with it. There are very few dancers that dance without pain. And a top class dancer today would probably practice in the region of at least two to three hours a day. I know some will laugh and say no, but really to get to the top and stay at the top, it does take determination, dedication, and that's works out at a couple of hours a day practice, and that's usually either after school or after work. Colin Dunn has put the effort in, but as I watched him and the other competitors, I wondered why it all seemed so serious. Great steps, but not too many smiles. The fun element and nobody smiling. Uh, well, if you had to do all that fancy, tricky footwork to, in a certain uh, time element with the bars of music. The concentration alone, you forget about smiling, I can assure you, but we, believe it or not, we are enjoying ourselves, otherwise we wouldn't do it. But it is, it's a very intricate, difficult art form. Each pattern of steps performed on the right foot must be followed by a similar pattern on the left. And there's a great inventiveness and creativity involved. The dancing is demanding and skillful. 
It's also highly competitive and the competition exists far beyond the shores of Ireland. It's worldwide. It may be called Irish dancing, but some of the best exponents are found in England, Australia and America. The Irish have no advantage anymore, unfortunately. They have got to work as hard as everybody else. And people from other countries have worked very hard to get here. Uh, in the early days, people had gone out from Ireland, even the past 20 years, had gone out instructing in Canada, America, places like that. And uh, they used to instruct in steps, so forth. But uh, the Yanks have come back, and the Australians and the English with them, and maybe taught us a bit about our own game. Paula McCullough is still determined to compete. She hasn't been able to train for several days. Her ankle needs more treatment. I'm still hoping to dance. I'm, I still hope that on Easter Sunday I'll be up there dancing with the rest of them. That's all I want to do. Can you actually see a difference in your ankle at the moment? You can. It's still very swollen. So are you going to seek some expert advice on it? Yes, I'm going to see the doctor tomorrow and whatever he says I'll abide by it. Looking at the difference in it, you're looking for a tiny miracle for this weekend? I think I am. The World Championships have a serious side and a not so serious one. The dance drama gives everyone a chance to take part. This dancing school gives a lively interpretation of a fox hunt. The riders, horses, hounds and the unfortunate fox. All represented. This time, a happy ending. The fox gets away. Outside in the foyer, troops of Irish dancing teams in all their finery get some last minute rehearsal time. And out in the foyer as well, Caroline Green from Glasgow, the main rival to Paula and Carol, is fancied by many to take the ladies' title. Now, for the first dance, so do we get the ratio? The names correct. of the judges the for the ladies' title are selected. What will they be looking for? Channel. You will judge on overall general appearance, the way the dancer uses the stage, their timing, their rhythm, and the execution of their steps. That's basically the qualities that we'll be looking for tomorrow. The day of the ladies' final. There's a great buzz of excitement and anticipation. For Paula McCullough, disappointment. She simply isn't fit to dance and joins the onlookers. Dancing in the toilets is strictly forbidden, but the mirror is simply too inviting. From the very first steps on stage, it's clear that the standard is exceptionally high this year. Stage, within minutes of the start, a drama is unfolding. While warming up, Caroline Green slipped on a tiled floor. She's twisted her ankle badly. 
Okay, can I have it? Oh. Give me the ice pack and uh, sweet food. Mm. Ice pack is under the blanket. Okay. Okay, look, take it easy, okay. Tell me what happened, Jeff. It seems that injuries are part and parcel of this business, and which, I wondered, are the most common. The commonest injuries I have seen over the last few years at the world are more strains and sprains of the, particularly ligaments, of the foot and ankle. The long-term problem arising from such injuries, if you badly tear a ligament, then the immediate treatment is very important, and the follow-up treatment is very important. But usually a badly strained ligament or sprained ligament, and it's particularly if the fibres are torn, may lead to yeah, permanent to instability of that particular joint. And it's a terrible thing to think that could happen in childhood or in te teenager age or young adulthood because it would affect their other sporting activities thereafter for the rest of their lives. The other dancers may be sympathetic, but this is a competition. Caroline Green will still take the stage and could win despite her injury. In the wings, Carol Levy waits her turn. She's on next. Caroline Green may be in pain, but she's dancing superbly. The drama continues off the stage. Unknown to the judges, Caroline Green has to receive attention between dances. She's scoring highly in the adjudicating. As the hard shoe section gets underway, Caroline Green is dancing as strongly as ever. She's emerging as one of the clear favorites. Your favourite is Cara Levy. <laughs> Caroline Green laces up for the final round of the championship the specialized solo dance. Cara Levy goes first. these dancers, the results of a long hard year of preparation are about to be made known. Cara Levy has danced beautifully. 
Now it's the turn of the girl from Scotland, Caroline Green. Her routine will decide the outcome of the World Championship. Final steps of the Ladies World Championships. Only the result remains, and only two dancers are in contention. Carol Levy has done it. For Caroline Green and her supporters, there's bitter disappointment. She was beaten by just two and a half points in hundreds. It's been one of the closest results ever. The title won't travel to Glasgow yet. The Hutchard, Kate Zemi, Elaine Daly, Skalrinkali Vorga, Zera. Zemi Oj, Shakto Ado, Lucia Raptor, Skalrinkali Vorga, Zera. So can we have this year's winner of Prave Naman Oshinchur, Carol Levy from the Skullrinka Iradi Palyaklia. Tradition of many Irish dancers, Carol Levy will retire at the end of these championships. She may well become a dancing teacher, but for the time being, the world is at her feet. <laughs> <laughs> 